The Jilin province is one of the three provinces of northeast China. It has an approximate population size of 1.5 million. Jilin is also home to the Songhua River, the fourth longest river in China, which begins at Songhua Lake near Jilin City. The Songhua River is one of the largest tributaries to the Amur River in Russia and is therefore key to the development of areas like Jilin. The Songhua River is a main source of drinking water for millions of people in both countries. The area around the river delta is extremely fertile and is a region copious in agricultural production and cultivation. The Songhua River is also a national tourism site for many travelers. Considering these valuable cultural, economical, and ecological aspects, one would expect that water sources such as Sungwa River would be monitored and properly protected. However, it led to the massive release of benzene, 7.5 tons and nitrobenzene, almost 100 tons, into the main water supply for a Chinese residents living close to the Sunghua River. The explosion resulted in 80 kilometers of spilled chemicals traveling down the river. Tower T-102, where this catastrophic event had occurred, there was a blockage in one of the chemical plant's nitration processing towers where benzene was produced. Learning about this, a worker attempted to clear the blockage as part of protocol. However, he failed to unblock the channel and this resulted in a domino effect of explosions that took place. The explosion lasted a full hour. The fires were so large that they weren't able to be put out until the next morning. Tens of thousands of residents had to be evacuated from their homes. The evacuees were mainly locals and students from Bois University. A few days later, there were some government officials who had told the press that the explosion aftermath was not serious and would not cause large-scale pollution. One such person was Vice Mayor Wang Wei. However, eight days later, the city of Harbin was forced to suspend water from the Songhua River for roughly 4 million residents. At that point, nitrobenzene levels were 30 times over the maximum safety level for drinking water. When the information was leaked to the public, Wei had already taken his own life. Other powerful officials, such as the Chief of the State Environmental Protection Administration, had resigned from his post, and the head of the Jilin branch of China National Petroleum Corporation was dismissed. The Chinese government apologized to Russia and took full responsibility for the impact that the explosion had on the Amur River. Approximately 100 tons of toxic chemicals, which consisted of benzene, aniline, and nitrobenzene, were released into the Songhua River, the main water source for many cities and the home to many wildlife species. Cities along the river, including Jilin, Harbin, and Jiaomuzi, suffered from the water contamination as it led to water shutdown for days in the major cities. Even with the biodegradation and volatilization, an estimated 46 tons of nitrobenzene passed through Harbin City, 500 kilometers away from the initial explosion. After another 700 or so kilometers along the river, at the city of Tongzheng, there were an estimated 25 tons of nitrobenzene still flowing through the river. Just like benzene, nitrobenzene can cause dizziness and nausea as well as irritation to the respiratory tract, skin, and eyes. It can also lead to methemoglobinemia, a dangerous condition in which the iron in your hemoglobin becomes oxidized and can no longer carry oxygen. Although there is limited research involving human subjects, rodent studies have shown nitrobenzene to be carcinogenic and to cause damage to the liver, spleen, kidneys, and central nervous system. As the animal population exposed to the toxic chemical leaks and the oil spills from the Jilin chemical plant explosion moved from one administrative region to the next one downstream, the transboundary nature of the incident exposed the flaws in China's environmental regulations at the time. 
However, despite the range of measures taken by the government, including implementations of new policies like the Water Pollution Control Act and the overall enhanced focus on emergency response, there were severe environmental impacts, including but not limited to the Songhua River. Furthermore, the river contamination had many immediate effects to the ecosystem. Exposure to benzene had severely destroyed several communities and organisms in the river, with potential loss of biodiversity. Ecologists claim that the toxic chemicals had specifically harmed several fish populations in the river, resulting in overall decreased populations of several fish species. This decrease in fish population then had effects on other organisms higher up the food chain as well, including the mandarin duck and the red-crowned crane. Furthermore, the bioaccumulation of toxic chemicals like benzene could present a long-term problem. Being denser than water, nitrobenzene sinks to the bottom of water bodies, possibly covering bethnic rocks and sediment. Nitrobenzene is also a volatile compound, meaning it not only interacts with the bethnic environment of the Songhua River, but the atmosphere as well. In fact, the majority of nitrobenzene removal from the Songhua River was due to volatilization. Given the especially large volume of nitrobenzene that was released into the Songhua River, groundwater contamination became a concern after the primary surface water perturbation. Fortunately, the nitrobenzene levels within the groundwater stayed below allowable levels. This is accredited to the low amounts of carbon in the river's sediment, resulting in a low risk of significant absorption of nitrobenzene at the time. Researchers from Taiwan University and the Harbin Institute of Technology created a digital model to study the long-term consequences of the nitrobenzene spill, and they reported that most of the nitrobenzene was either volatilized or biodegraded, without long-term absorption into suspended particles or sediment. The results of the Jilin chemical explosion led to the death of six people, with 70 injured and thousands being evacuated from their own residences. Since the catastrophe, countless debates have sparked conversations regarding the local government's efforts to remediate these consequences. Ultimately, this tragic event may have been prevented by safer handling practices. Aside from the obvious immediate consequences, incidents such as this put the long-term health of humans and ecosystems in jeopardy. Worker safety, environmental protection practices, and greater transparency between the government and residents need to be implemented.